Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltori, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last year and a half or so, I've been featuring each Fijiwa or King's Daughters and getting to know their stories a little bit better. There are over 700 of them. Today we're doing episode 177, so we've come a long way. Still a long way to go. But before we begin, let me show you ways that you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. All that helps the logarithms. It does help the channel grow. Another way to show your support is through a couple of ways. The super thanks that I have posted up there is right on your dashboard of your, your YouTube channel. And then we also have Etsy, Coffee, and Patreon. All are different platforms that um, help the channel grow. If you want to check those out, they're in the notes. So let's get started, shall we? So we're on episode 177, as I mentioned, and our lady of this episode is Marie-Renée Ariot. She is of your request. I do not have her in my files, so it was a pleasure to get to know Marie-Renée. So let's get to know her. So Marie-Renée was born in 1646 in the commune of Un Vire, which actually means one glass, which I think is amazing. Her parents were Bernardet Herriot and Marguerite Deli, and she is part of the Centre Val de Loire region. And inside that, she's part of the Ur et Loire département. There are about 1,200 people living there now, according to the 2019 census. And this church is the Église Saint Martin, where she would presumably have been baptized. And this is a aerial view of the small town. Commune, remember commune means town, um, in um, Unver. And after losing both parents, Marie would sail on the Nouvelle France as a fille du roi and arrive in Quebec City on July 31st, 1670. She would carry with her a dowry worth about 200 pounds. Let's have a look at the um, groom that she selected and who selected her. The groom that she selected, his name was René Vendée, and he was born in 1646 in Montarnay in France. His father was René Vendée, and his mother was André Légourneurs. And the region that he was born into was Pays de la Loire, which you can see on the bottom left. And the department inside that region is Vendée. Now, Montarnay has always been a farming community and has existed since the prehistoric times, traces of which still exist in the community. The church at Montarnay is called the Church of Notre Dame, which dates from the 15th century, although a church had been established there since the 11th century. So René would come to New France as an engagé, as so many did before him. He is found in a 1667 census in the household of Bertrand Chesney de, uh, de la Garonne. And um, he's, you can see him circled there, he's 18 years old. So he definitely came across and was working his way into this new world and this new life of his. And then he finds the love of his life. Well, when Marie first arrived, she did contract a marriage with a man named Claude Renard de Villory. Um, and unfortunately, it was annulled or canceled. And then um, about uh, six months later, April 11, 1671, she and um, René were married at Quebec City. And she did receive the king's gift of 50 pounds. So let's see where they end up settling. Well, they first settle in a town called Lausanne. And had Lausanne, to give you a little bit of background, had been settled back in 1636 by a man named Lausanne, very typical, who had basically been an absentee seigneur. His son, Jean de Lausanne, would actually take it over in 1651 and have it for another 10 years. And the third son, Charles de Lausanne, would take it over and would have it for about 30 years. It's during his tenure that Lausanne grew and became a true place to uh, create a home. The maps that I, I presented here are just amazing um, and how the, the Signori was laid out. It is truly one of those um, very historical places in Quebec, uh, 
of which many things are historical. The first founder of uh, Lausanne was Guillaume Couture that we're going to be studying in a little bit. But um, for those of you who have ancestry here, um, you know that you can count yourselves as one of the first, the you know, the really first inhabitants of Lausanne, the pioneers. Um, and it is um, the names of the families. If you have a, names like Carrier, Brulotte, Guy, uh, Bégin, Huard, Bourget. Um, and speaking, of, those are all names of the pioneers, part of them. There's a big list. And when you're looking for Lozo, I want you to be aware of a town by any other name. So I want you to be aware that it can be called Cap de Livy, Côte de Lozo, Saint-Joseph de la Pointe Livy, Saint-Joseph de Livy, Pointe Livy, or Pointe Levi, which is the one that the British gave it when they uh, took over Quebec, um, you know, in 1760. So this is where they first, first settled. And they would eventually settle at La Durante, and um, I just want to show you, uh, La Durante is really up from uh, from Quebec, so it's up north. Um, and the seigneurie was established in 1672 by the governor Frontenac to Olivier Morel de La Durante, who was a captain in the Carignan Salier Regiment. So he was he got the land in 1672. I suspect that he reached out, or this became something that René had heard about. Um, and then he would have moved to become one of the pioneers there. Um, so this little snippet is the 1681 census. And we have René, Marie, um, and their son, René. We have three Thaïdacon, which are um, goats, and eight Arpavala, which is about six acres of land. Now let's have a look at the family they created. They did in fact have nine children. But only four survived really to adulthood. And I just wanted to show you, like, wow, can you imagine? Louis, Guillaume, the second Guillaume, Maitre, and Rene, who was listed in that 1681 census, all passed away before uh, certainly Rene was six years old. Um, the second, there, then the following four children did survive. Um, Michel Pierre, would go on to marry Catherine Moray, but had no children her, with her. He then would marry Marie Madeleine Ely and have four children, all of whom would um, make it to adulthood. Marie would marry Jean Baptiste Guillaume Bretto and have two children, none of whom would make it. She then married Jacques Bissonnette, with whom she had six children, two of whom would make it. She then married Jean Baptiste Bella and had five children, three of whom would make it. Antoine would marry Jeanne Poirier and they would have one child. Now, Georges did not have any children that I can, I can find. Um, now, that gives you some idea of, wow, that's amazing that there's even some descendants, um, you know, based on that very small percentage. Let's have a look. So they would remain in La Durante for the remainder of their lives. Uh, Rene would pass away in 1702 at the age of 56. He and Marie would have been married 32 years when she, um, when he passed. Marie would outlive him by 13 years, dying in 1715 at the age of 68. And that is at La, the cemetery of La Durante where presumably they're buried. Um, as of 1729, they would only have 35 descendants. But we know that those descendants live on because we have a viewer that requested this. So I'm very excited to find out which which line it comes down from. Please let me know if you are a descendant of this um, this couple as well. And here are some of my favorite resources: La Société des Filles du Roi, the Quebec Genealogical e Society, Nos Origines, Genealogie Québec. Uh, we have the Facebook group of Figs of Roi Descendants. We have Wikitree, which is an amazing website. I used to feature a website called Migration, but unfortunately it's been down for quite a while. So I don't know if they've gone out of business, but please let me know if, if and when they, they do come back online and I'll post it. Um, it was a fabulous website, but I don't want to publicize it and have you frustrated that you can't find it. So um, so those are my favorite resources. Let me know if there's any others that you use on a regular basis to do your research. 
And so ends episode 177. Thanks for joining me. Marie Ariot was a person who, you know, had a lot of tragedy in her life, lost both her parents, came to New France, but she, she and her husband um, fought, made a life and, and withstood so much pain. You can't how many children passed, how many times she would have had to bury a child. I just can't even imagine that. But somehow she persevered. And she lasted until the age of 68, which is a remarkable feat at that time. And we want to acknowledge that contribution. We want to honor her sacrifice and bless her memory. Thank you, Marie. Until I see you on episode 178, au revoir.